Welcome back. If you're new around here, my name is Ellie and welcome to Small and Strong. Today I'm coming at you from my car. This is the steering wheel. I'm sorry, but we're in the car. I'm a bit stuck on where I can put you. I'm impressed that we've even got this going on, to be fair. Like, because my camera's quite hefty. Um, because my new phone doesn't film very well. I don't know what it is, but I... So I treated myself to the iPhone 13 and it... People have been saying online that it changes your video and it does. It makes it brighter and you can't turn that setting off. Anyway, regardless, I'm in my car. I am in my car. Whew, this car thing, this car thing's been going on for a while. Let me, let me explain. So, when I was 17, I applied for my provisional license, just the same as everybody else. I got my first car on Motability. The plan was I was going to do my driving lessons in my car, I was going to drive with my housemate who was old enough for me to drive with him on my provisional, um, and I did that for a year, roughly a year. I drove on my provisional licence with my housemate for a year and I had to try and find an instructor. On the motability scheme, they offer bursaries for young people learning to drive and you have to be with one of their driving instructors so it took them a while to find that driving instructor and when they did i had one lesson just the one and then i had my first seizure so i had one lesson and then my seizure and then that was it no more lessons nothing the car went back it was a beautiful car it was an audi a1 i was very lucky to have that as my first car it went back and my provisional license I had to give back. Um, it was it was a really tough time. That was probably the most difficult thing about my epilepsy diagnosis was having to give up driving because I was loving it. And I had planned, obviously, to start lessons. But, as you will have seen, I'm now two years seizure-free. So after one year seizure-free, you can apply to get your license back, which I did. Unfortunately, pandemic, it took a whole year to get that back. So I got it. I did driving lessons instantly, no waiting around for bursaries, I just did it. Found a driving instructor who I loved, he's an incredible guy, I had a great time with him. Got all my lessons done, passed, yes, that was a few videos ago, and then I got my car. The car was another debacle as well, I spoke about that before, but I ordered it. The car arrived, and then they were like, no, sorry, we were meant to order two, but we only ordered one, so the other person's going to get the car. So I ended up waiting about ten months for this car. I am so happy to finally have it. So happy. I have got a BMW 1 Series in grey. It is a beautiful car. It is beautiful to drive. I love it. I'm not massively a car person, but oh my goodness, I love this car. The car is on the Motability Scheme. Now, the Motability Scheme is essentially, when you're disabled, you qualify for certain benefits. And... I do qualify so depending on how many points you get it's a whole thing depending on how many points you get you get a motability allowance so that is a certain amount of money a month that goes towards a car or travel if you don't have a car so I've been getting that for a while and then now that I get a car I don't receive that money it goes straight to the car people that money pays for the car the insurance and the servicing I believe I think that's what it covers. So when you get the car, you pay an upfront cost and then the rest of it comes from your, your motability part of your money gets taken away. So I have this car for three years. It is essentially a lease. So despite paying an upfront cost, I have this car for three years and then it goes back to the dealership. I can't buy it outright, none of that. There's no options. It goes back to the dealership and then I get another car for another three years. That's the way it works. So essentially, a disabled person gets a lovely brand new car, which I'm very fortunate to have this one. And then the dealership gets it back after that time and gets to sell it on second hand and all of that. At the minute, second hand cars are worth a lot. So the dealerships don't miss out on this scheme. Like they're not losing anything by doing the scheme. It's also really handy for me as a first time driver because motability does cover your insurance so i'm not paying ridiculous insurance which i'm also very fortunate about and i am able to have two other people on my insurance at no extra cost this is extremely handy because for me if something goes wrong when i'm out and about 
I know that I have two people I can call that can drive my car. There are rules about who is allowed to be on your insurance. For example, like, if you don't live with people, then they can put a tracker in your car to check that the car is not being used without you in it. Because the rule is, the car can only be used for your benefit. So, the two other people on my insurance can't just go and drive the car about and use it as their car. It is my car because it's on the scheme. And they can only drive it for my use. So if I need dropping somewhere or picking up somewhere. Having those two people on my insurance means that if I'm in any sort of problem, they can drive. They're the two people that I would be with the most anyway. So I'm very, very pleased to have that. It's also been handy recently because within one week of the car, I drove a thousand miles. And driving does unfortunately hurt my body. It does. Sitting in the seat in certain positions having to hold different positions that I've not held before. Maybe I'll get used to it, maybe I won't, but for now, it has left my body in tatters. So, so far it has been painful, but it means that on a long journey, I can have the other person drive the car, which I planned to do when I drive to see my Nana to watch Hollyoaks, but that never ended up happening because I just love driving, I do, I just love driving, I love it, I love everything about it, and especially because I've been waiting, I'm now 21, so I started learning at 17, and then had, like, two, three years off, and now I'm 21, and here I am, finally, so I'm gonna show you a few bits on the car, um, it's not like a car person video, because I don't know about the car person things, but I'll show you my bits. So this is my steering wheel and you can see here we've got an electronic dash which is so fancy. So my music and stuff comes up here, you can choose what you put up here. This shows that I've done 1,480 miles, I've had the car three weeks. That's my petrol, we're not going to talk about the petrol shortage and then my miles an hour comes up there. Got my lovely steering wheel, oh so you can just love it. And then I've got my little air freshener guy, little Joe, there he is. I've got one here and I've got one over here. And then all my stuff comes up here. This is touchscreen, which I love. Look, and when I turn my car off and on, it says goodbye and hello, Ellie. So, oh, I just love it. But it's touchscreen, sat nav, all of that. And it connects to my phone, which, like, is basic now. But I'm still very impressed by it. And then something else is at night, this whole strip lights up this strip and then I've got a strip down here as well this strip it all lights up purple and I love it you can change that in the settings but I say it's purple I got a five door we've got three seats in the back two seats in the front and a boot and there I am oh hey you're precariously balanced but I believe I can make this work maybe I can't I don't know but when buy my car I went through the dealerships and I took my wheelchair with me. Now, I don't use my wheelchair all the time, so for a few of the dealerships I wasn't sat in it, but it is important that the wheelchair fits the car. Some of the cars that are available, your wheelchair, depending on what you've got, will or won't fit. I looked at a Mini and there was no chance of my wheelchair fitting in that. That doesn't mean it'll be the same for your wheelchair, but for me, it's important that my chair fits in the car. Now, this car... The boot is quite spacious so my wheelchair fits in no problem and there's like a bit where you can make the boot deeper you can pull it back and make the boot deeper and when that's open I can fit the chair and both the wheels in but when that's up I can fit the chair and a wheel and then another wheel goes in the back of the car I have a video on getting a wheelchair in and out of a car as an ambulatory wheelchair user so I'm able to put the wheelchair in myself which I will link above but if you can't like walk and pick up your wheelchair then there's loads and loads and loads of other videos on youtube but i have had a practice and despite being scared to scratch all of my car up which i didn't do didn't scratch it you are able to move the chair quite far back in this car so i can move it really far back to transfer the seat across me to sit it next to me and there is a lot of leg room in this car this is supposed to be a small car but no everything fits in it and i've had five people in the car admittedly three grown adults in the back were a bit squished but like that's impressive considering this is my first car, my first proper car and it's like quite a small car so so far so very good this is my boot open so what i was saying was this bit 
you can lift up and it makes the boot that much deeper so when that's folded up my chair fits perfectly but the back two seats go down so easily you just press this little shoulder bit in here and push it down and they both sides do that so that's dead handy another question that i got asked a lot was if i need any adaptations on the car with the motability scheme you have the option of going to a test center and trying out loads of different adaptations seeing what works best for you and then it gets put on the car before it gets to you i don't quite know how it works with paying but from what i can remember there are certain adaptations you have to pay a bit for but other ones come as standard or free it also i believe costs less if you get the adaptations done before you get the car versus after you get the car but i personally don't have any adaptations well I don't, I didn't have to send my car off for any adaptations. So for me, the rules are I have to drive an automatic because if um, I were to dislocate my shoulder, changing gears, that's a high possibility and my arms get very tired and I wanted to minimize that as much as possible. But also with an automatic, you only have two pedals, which is great. With three pedals, you have to transfer one of your feet between the two pedals and with an automatic car most people drive with one foot using the two pedals i don't this is my adaptation i drive with two feet so i have one foot on the accelerator and one foot on the brake so most people will drive with this foot like this but that's a bit much for me so i do that like my feet are always busy this is so that I can just place my foot there and know where it is. It is on that pedal, it's not going anywhere. It also means that I don't have to twist my leg and my hip and my knee and my ankle because my right leg is my weaker leg. So where that would be the one transferring, it no longer has to do that. It does mean that my ankles get a bit tired from holding my feet up, but honestly, I'll take it. I'll take it because the other alternative is not driving and I'm not doing that. So that is my car. I think I've covered a lot in quite a short video. I believe that's going to be all for me today. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section down below and I will reply to them. That is my mission. I'll reply to all the comments. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next video.